What's going on everyone? ODC here and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review we're actually going to take a look at two figures uh, pretty much because they're very similar um, but we're going to take a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Rumble Society Craig 13 and Craig the Pale Drivers. Um, so story, long story short the story of the Craigs are pretty much they're all clones uh, Craig 13 is the Spartan. Spartans are all in black. Craig 13 specifically was kind of like the elite of the elite of the elite of all the Krigs. And uh, he kind of broke away from what was called the Hive to become his own person, pretty much, and became a bounty hunter. Um, the Pale Drivers right here are um, just kind of very similar to, you know... Your, what would be mid-tier level, I guess, uh, troopers is what you could do. Um, these are, I want to say, quote, troop builders. Craig is more of his own character where these guys and I believe the um, blood, what was it called? What are they called? The blood, uh, blood force or something like that. Um, those are army builders quote sorry it's above the camera army builders they're not i don't know i can't really consider an 80 dollar figure or 90 dollar figure to be an army builder unless you have crazy cash like that to be building an army um i got both these guys off of a trade uh, with the figures themselves just talking about them obviously you could see he i got him uh, craig 13 with his his cloak on here there are some reused parts from the cable figure here, I want to say this chest piece is a reuse from Cable. Excuse me. <sighs> Big yawn. Um, everything looks pretty good, though. I like the uh, the uniqueness of some of the weaponry. We'll get into all that in accessories. Uh, these guys do have a light-up feature, which I'm not a big, huge fan of light-up features. I feel like a lot of toy companies try to charge an arm and leg for a light up feature that doesn't necessarily need to be there. I don't think. Um, and I'll express why I don't think this one especially needs a light up feature because, and I get probably the torso was already set up that way, but, uh, you know, I, they could have went with a different torso maybe here. I do like the overall design that the helmet is very unique. I remember when I first saw these guys up for pre-order, I was very intrigued. I was like, what the hell is that? Um, because it looks like some sort of like, I don't know, alien, crustacean slash, I don't know, insectoid type deal. Like a like a worm's face or something. Or something from like Starship Troopers that belongs in there. Um, that's what I thought of. But it is just a helmet. Um, it is just protective gear with a bunch of different cameras. And as you can see there, all of these cameras uh, are probably have a different use uh, for each camera. Um, I like to also think that this these cameras do equal out to a maybe like a 360 degree uh, visualization for the helmet, which I think is pretty cool. Probably picks up heat signatures also. Um, all that fun stuff. But if we take the helmet off, which you just separate here, it's just four tabs on each side. There's two tabs on each side. You can top... Uh, pop that off and then you have this really nicely well done if I can get my lighting properly um, detail on the inside now it would have been cool if they could have painted some of this digital display right there you can also see it's got um, some sort of like uh, filtration so maybe if there's like toxic gases that'll filtrate through the mask so the Krigs don't have to uh you know, inhale anything deadly to them. That's pretty cool. Um, but it would have been cool if they could have, you know, painted some of the digital display. That would have been nice, a little touch. If we take the back portion off, you can also see that there's still some detail in there. And I gotta say, a lot of these details and just the, the way that the figures kind of set up reminds me of like some sort of like, I don't know, almost like a <sighs> cross between something like a... Starship Troopers meets um, those like elite Wayland Yutani 
troopers that were in the end of Alien 3. If you guys know what I'm talking about. I get I get off vibes of that. I don't know why. But um, you can see he's got some cushing, some padding going in there for the helmet. And maybe also even some support. So that's uh, pretty much the helmet there. Looks pretty cool. Like I said, uh, if we can put the helmet back together. Like so. And there's really only one way it can go. Um, that looks like a little mouth right there. If you take a look at that closer. Looks like a some sort of like i said like an insectoid like crustacean or some shit it's pretty awesome though but uh yeah look good you can see some, there's some sort of like wear and tear and kind of even just battle damage on there that looks really good sorry i'm really stuffy so i apologize there's just horrible allergies this time this season i can't stand it but that's pretty much the head there Moving on to the Craig head. Um, all of the bodies, the heads, everything, the accessories, everything is exactly the same across the board with all the Craigs, even with the Craig 13. Um, the light-up feature is the same. The heads are the same. I would have liked a little differentiation between Craig 13's head sculpt and the regular Craig's. I think that would have just made more sense seeing as he broke away and doesn't want to be a part of the hive anymore. Um, and he's pretty much the best of the best. I would have thought he would have, you know, maybe shaved his head or a different haircut or something, anything that's different. Maybe we'll get like an updated kit for Craig 13 in the future. Who knows? But um, that's what the head looks like. Very cyborgish. These are all cyborgs, which is cool. Taking a look at the armor as well. Looks very well done. Really good with the black paint shading going throughout. And as you can see see there, there is some battle damage on each shoulder pad. Looks really good. The utility belt is a functional utility belt. You can take these magazines off. Um, so there's that. We've got grenade loops right here. Clips, I should say. C-clips. And then we also have a C-clip for the taser. And then we have a functional holster for the gun, which is nice. And then we also have a knife with a sheath with a loop, which is pretty cool. And you can take the knife out if you want to. And put it back in, blop, blop, blop. And there you go, sir. Looks really good. I really like the, uh, the paint shading and uh, just detail overall with these boots. They look fantastic. I'm really loving it. Where a lot of on Craig 13, the detail kind of blends in. You do have like a flat black with him or like a matte black, excuse me, with him. And then you have like a glossy black mixed throughout. So some of the details kind of you miss a little bit unless you look closely. But with this guy, with the pale drivers, you really get a lot of that detail pulled out. I want to say that this is probably the best detailed out of all the Krigs. The red version, this version, or the Krig 13. We're supposed to get murder hornets too, which are supposed to have a different head sculpt. So we'll see what happens there when those come out. But I really like these boots. They look really good. You can see there's some tread on the bottom. With extra grippage. I wonder if these boots differentiate at all. No, they're pretty much the same. Everything's pretty much the same across the board. But uh, yeah, the bodies look really good. Very pleased with that. We do have a clip for the, uh, whether it's the shotgun here or the, um, the scythe that he comes with. Either one you can store right there. And it's like, a, like I said, a, a little bit of more of a flexible plastic so you can remold that if you need it to be more uh, taut. One of the grenades fell off. Just pop that back on. There we go. But I don't know. He's just a fun looking figure. Um, I really like the head sculpt. It's just a, a unique looking figure overall. And I can I can appreciate that. As far as all the Krig's articulation does go. And I'm just going to kind of take a couple accessories off. Just so I don't get in the way of articulation or anything. The, uh, the head cancelable back and forth can do a full 360 if you wanted to the head can look up just a hair um it's not i don't think it's really meant to look up but it can and then it looks 
nah, pretty much neutral right there. There's no hinge joint because we do have the light up feature right there, which we'll get to in a second, but just kind of wanted to point that out. We do have tiltage side to side, so you can get a little bit more uh, posing out of that head. And let's see if he's got jive turkeys. There is no turkeys, no gobbles. No, not even one. Um, arms can go up about that far. They go down. They can swivel back and forth. Actually, more so back than really forward. I want. Oh no, it's about about even. I take that back. We do have a bicep swivel. We have a double jointed elbow, which is there. It's just very hindered due to the cloth and the bunching of the cloth, excuse me, and also the armor here. So it gets 90 degrees though, a little bit more than 90 degrees actually. So it's not too bad. Uh, we do have a wrist, uh, of like a kind of like a, a I want to say like a, a, not a wrist swivel, but a forearm swivel right there. I don't know if that's just an illusion because of the armor being on a separate piece. Uh, but we also have a wrist swivel as well and a hinge that goes up and down. So that's pretty nice. He can swivel. There goes the grenade again. He can swivel at the diaphragm, twist, pivot back and forth. Let's see if he swivels in the lower waist. He does. It is there. I promise you. He can do the splits about that far, which is actually really good, um, even with that seam there. Pretty good. Um, legs can go forward. And legs can go back. It's a little hindered due to the, the uh, sculpting of the rear end. He does have a upper thigh swivel. He does have a double jointed knee. We do have a, let me see, a little bit of a boot swivel, ankle swivel, ankle pivot, which is there. And he can point the toe, not too great. Point the heel, not too great. But he does stand perfectly. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. Um, I've never really never had any issue with these guys standing and such. Let me just put all this stuff back on here. So you should be good to go on that front. Um, getting the helmet back on and everything. I mean, I'll actually just leave this helmet off. I'll just, we'll go through uh, the rest of that stuff with him. But uh, I overall I really like the details and everything. It looks pretty crisp and clean with him. Um, he does have a light up feature, which I'll just actually come back in here. I'll turn my lights off really quick. And we'll kind of go through that. Actually, before I turn the lights off, we'll just remove the back part, which I'll take that off. All you want to simply do is just lightly, gently pull that up. It comes right off. You'll see a on and off switch. When you do get the figure brand new, it will be on the off switch. Or no, I'm sorry. The, <laughs> the switch will be on the on switch. Um, you'll just have to put it on the off switch, um, unscrew this screw, put the three batteries in. Uh, they don't tell you which way to direct the batteries, but I will say this, the smaller circle side goes that facing that way. So the flat side faces this way, circle side faces that way. That's how you get those in. I don't think any other reviewer explained that at all, so I'm gonna explain it to you. Um, <laughs> Once you have those in, you just wanna hit the on switch right there. You'll see some light up feature right there as well. Put the back back on and then turn them around and you'll see a little bit of light, but I'm gonna turn my lights off so you can see. There we go, that's a lot better. A little bit fuzzy, I'm trying to get my lighting just right for that. But as you can see, maybe if I get my shadow in there, there we go. It's a little bit better. I'm sorry for the fuzziness of <laughs> of this maybe i can get this uh to be less fuzzy but it's not um but this is pretty much what he looks like with the the light up feature on you can get some really good you know shots of this especially with that eye glowing for him i think that looks really good uh, the chest lighting up looks very nice it's a little bit overly bright especially like right there you can see that little <laughs> glare but overall, pretty nice little feature. I think it would have been nice if we could have just gotten the head to light up and not the chest 
it gives off that very Iron Man feel, and I don't know if I, I don't know if I really like that too much, but I think the eye just lighting up would have been awesome. I don't know. It looks very Borgish too. So there's that. Oh, did that just turn off when I pulled that up? Oh, look at that. That's a little, maybe that's a feature I, don't, I didn't know about. <laughs> am I if I just learned something when you pull this up and the switch is on? No, maybe it's just a, a thing. I don't know. For some reason, it turned off. I don't know why. But uh, let's get my lighting back on here so we can see what the hell we're doing. There we go. But looks really crisp and clean. I'm very pleased with him overall. Um, as far as Craig 13 goes, he is pretty much exactly the same. I'm not going to run through articulation and all that stuff with him. And uh, pretty much all the details and everything are exactly the same. I'm going to kind of go through some stuff that I didn't go through with the first, uh, with the pale driver, with Craig. But uh, like I said, Craig 13 is exactly the same. Uh, there's a little bit of different paint apps here with the chest piece. And let me just get this out of his hand. Uh, the chest piece and just a couple other things. Obviously, the paint apps are going to be different here, as you can blatantly see. He's Craig 13 is all black with a little bit of a green paint right there for the chest piece. I think I feel like if he would have went black and green, it would have looked a little bit better with him, uh, especially seeing as the magazines are black and green and. He's got this little chest piece that's painted green. Uh, but taking off his helmet, if you do want to take his helmet off, you can. It's just right there. And this is so new, I haven't even taken the plastic off his head. But as you can see, it's the exact same head sculpt. There's no differentiation. Like I said, I would have liked that, seeing as this guy is showing a little bit more personality with not being a part of the hive anymore and, you know, all that fun stuff. But putting his helmet back on... Very simple, easy to do. There you go. Uh, overall, you know, pretty nice. They come with the same exact accessories. Like I said, um, it comes with four magazines, four of those magazines. He does come with this uh, plasma shotgun or whatever the heck it's called. Um, but it looks really nice. It does have a stock that does fold out. I wanna say this, the stock is really loose. It's like loose as shit on these. And I, I feel like they should have uh, tightened this up a little bit better. It also feels very dainty. Like, even if I put this up against his shoulder, it's just going to push back in. So it's like, what's the point of even having a stock that's, you know, able to do that if it's just going to constantly just go back in any way on its own? Might as well just left the stock like this or just leave it molded sticking outward. I don't know. I just feel like having that as a movable joint is redundant. Uh, the shotguns are painted, I want to say, pretty much the same here. And I'm just looking for some sort of differences here, but they look exactly the same. So um, the, I want to say the, it's not really a, like a, like it's like a kind of like a parka or like a cape. Uh, the way you put this on, and all the Krigs come with it, Krig 13 is the only one that comes with the painted on 13 number. All the other Krigs don't come with any of that. They also don't come with this little symbol right here. Um, they're all wired. There's a wire in here, this section, and I believe, where else? It's in this section, this section of the, the cape and this section of the cape as well. So there is some wiredness to it, and right here as well, the front. Uh, also in the collar, the collar is also wired. So how you wanna do this is you'll see there's a little slit right here. That's for the back of the uh, rifle holder. And you'll see it sticking out just like that. All you simply wanna do is just feed that through there, like so, just like that. And then just pretty much twist it, line it up, fold this in. You'll see two Velcro tabs right there. You want to fit this, just match it up right there. There, and then there, and then now he's got his kind of like 
parka or whatever you want to call this, like a cloak, cloak on him, covering up. Um, and you can manipulate this, like I said, if you want to do some sort of windswept scenario going on here, you could do that. Like so, there we go. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, his arms can still articulate with this even going on. If you wanted to set that down and have his arm sticking out, you could. If you want to have his arm up and over, you can. There's little spots for it right there. So if you want to do some like rainy shots of him, you could do that. Cold weather, you could do that. Whatever you'd really like to do, you can accomplish that if you just want to have him kind of standing there looking cool with his let's see looking cool like that you could do that so the world is your oyster um i've been using the scythe this is his scythe right here i've been using a scythe on his back uh some of the other craigs will have different painted scythes um and we'll go through that with the accessories and such but uh, you can just pop this right on his back portion right here. Or you can pop the shotgun on there. I've been popping just the scythe on there. I think it's a good spot for the scythe as well. And then I've been kind of folding this underneath. So that's just exposed the whole time. So if he needs to grab that really quick, he can. And then I've been posing him with his shoddy his plasma shotgun in his hand like so so i mean he, he's definitely got the the vibe of something some sort of special specialty character to him um like i said i would love to see an alternate head in the future for him i, I really wish that they would have given him an alternate head just to go with um that could have still fit with the helmet on or even just give us an alternate head that doesn't fit in the helmet and then just give us the helmeted, the regular helmeted head. So you can have some sort of differentiation. I mean, we got Baron Benz. We got two different versions of Baron Benz um, with two unmasked heads. Why not give Craig 13 an unmasked head that looks a little bit different from the rest of the, the Craigs? I don't know. I think it would have made more sense. But every time I hear the word Krig, I think of Friday when when uh, Felicia's like, Krig, Krig. You know, I just keep thinking that in my head. I don't know why. <laughs> over and over again. Krig. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me borrow your microwave. What? Get out of here. <laughs> uh, I just keep thinking that. I don't know why. Um... He did come with a Mezit. Uh, wasn't expecting to get this, but he did come with it. And here's a little boombox situation. It is articulated. You can swivel the waist. You can swivel the head. You can move the ears. You can move the arms and the legs. Swivel. So, actually, decent articulation for such a little teensy figure. Okay, the, uh, the figure... Craig 13 also came with, let me just set them aside really quick, a little comic, which is really cool. So, you know, I love learning new lore about new characters and such. So um, it's not too much that's that's involved here, but I, I can appreciate this. Um, I love comics or mini comics or anything like that. It even has a little price tag of $3.99, which would be entirely way overpriced for, for this comic. But they show Craig 13 here. They show the pale drivers here. The blood, what are they called again? The blood scourge or some shit like that? Blood force or I think it's the blood, fo blood force. Let me double check here. I'll show you guys all of this. Yes, the blood force. The blood force, which is the kind of, I want to say, dime a dozen guys. <laughs> then we've got the pale drivers and then the murder hornets, which are uh, army of two, and then you've got your Krig 13. So he's the elite of the elite. Then it goes murder hornets, then pale drivers, then blood force. Uh, don't have any blood force guys. I, I don't know if I really am going to get any of those. 
I just happened to get a pail driver because I got him with him. It was kind of like a pairing deal thing. Um, I would like to get a murder hornet. I don't need uh, two or three or ten. But opening up the comic here, um, it says, Coming soon, Atticus Doom. Rumble Society presents an occult private eye tethered to the Necroverse by his left hand. So, pretty interesting. I, I'm guessing this is some sort of figure that's going to be coming out in the future. Um, looks interesting. Um, yeah. So, another member of the Rumble Society is coming sometime soon. I know this has been featured in a few comics now that have come out. Maybe next year they'll release him. I don't know. Still waiting on uh, Nemo to ship. So, who knows? <laughs> But it shows here some artwork of Craig 13. This is where I kind of get like, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have done this. Like, you shouldn't, like, I don't know. Personally, I, I don't like when they multiverse everything. Like, this should be its own universe, the Rumble Society, and just kind of leave it the way it is. You can see you've got... Uh, Baron Benz's uh, anchor over here, a Tesseract. You've got, obviously, Star Destroyers here. You've got uh, the Boombox, and you've got Thor's Hammer over here. So I, I'm just not a big fan of that, but this is what it looks like on the inside. You can read that if you want to. I'm entirely too stuffed up to read this to you guys. Um... Over here, it shows kind of the birthing matrix, if you will, or the uh, process of making the Krigs. There are 13 of them. And obviously, they are built. Uh, it says, fashioned from synthet synthetic-ized organics. They built us. They fused us with machines. They ripped us apart. We're built, I'm sorry, built us from flesh, ripped us apart, and then fused us with machines. We are the same. And I and even shows like their skin color and such. It's kind of like purple. So pretty cool there. This is program to fight, survive, win. Each of us manufactured as an army of one. Sold or leased for the agendas of others. And down here, you can actually see some of the rankings, how they might rank the Krigs. Is you got the Blood Force, then the Pale Drivers, then the Murder Hornets, and then the, and then Krig 13. So pretty cool there. Over here, we've got some Slugfest Emporium stuff. If you want to buy it, go for it. Um, shows the Blood Force, obviously attacked Baron Benz, so. So they had a, they must have had a, a fight with Baron Benz, and Baron Benz must have got the better of them because they sent Craig 13 uh, after after them, or Craig 13, I think you're saying Craig. <sighs> Craig 13 after Baron Benz later on, or somebody did put a bounty on Baron Benz. But it actually says that uh, they had uh, murdered most of the Aquanauts. So that's a different story for a different time, I guess. And the Pale Drivers, and they explain how they uh, raided Solomon 9, which is another story for another time, apparently. And the Murder Hornets, surgical, violent, unstoppable, swarm of two. So maybe they'll be set, sold as a, as a, I don't know, a duo. But uh, yeah, that's what they look like, the Murder Hornets right there. So... And then finally explains Craig 13 and how special he is. And then we've got a funny little Craig photon tag thing there. And that's pretty much the comic right there. So that's it. Okay, really quick. I thought I would include some of the packaging. Um, here's Craig 13's, how that looks. And here is the regular Craig uh, Pale Drivers. Um, pretty much same packaging. It's just got the Mezco exclusive logo on there. It says Craig Pale Drivers down there, and then Craig 13, the Black Spartan right here. Other than that, when we open it up, you'll see a little bit of differentiation between the slip covers right here and here, and here and here. Let's see if I can get this all in one shot. Hopefully I can. There you go, there's the differences between, which is pretty much this color palette. 
And then this one says Craig 13 Rumble Society on it, where that one just doesn't say anything. So same photo. I kind of wish that the uh, artwork would improve a little bit. This looks a little just kind of boring to me. Um, maybe if they got an actual, like, I don't know, legit artist to do this, <clears throat> strident, um, then, uh, you know, that'd be great. Okay, so first little thing that when we open up to the very bottom, you'll see is the, where it says Craig here, it says Rumble Society Craig, 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 sorry, 13 uh, over here, um, and then we have 1 through 12, and then you got the 13th one up there, so the little stickers, if you want to sticker them somewhere, or I don't know, do whatever you want with these pretty much. Then next up, we have another sticker sheet. We've got some pretty cool, you know, Black Spartan, Blood Force, Pale Drivers, and Murder Hornets right there. We've got the different logos. Maybe these are rankings. I don't know. But pretty cool there. We also have some more sticker sheets. It looks like different icons for different things. We've got a Craig 13 logo here. Maybe these are some sort of, like, rankings. I, that's what I'm assuming those are. So that's pretty cool that you can add those onto your Craig, onto his parka or wherever you want to put him. And then it has numbers one through 13. Next up, we've got the cape or cloak, whatever you want to call it, parka. Um, and then we have the obligatory 112 collective bag. We do have the display stand, which is exactly the same as Craig 13's, just with a white pail driver on there. And we have the display stand kind of arm, whatever you want to call that. So next up, we've got where it holds the, the rifle, the scythe, um, some display options for your scythe right here for your pistol, for your gun, um, or your taser right there. And I'll show you how to put those on in a second. Then we also have your batteries right here, which I did install them into the pail driver. That's what this, this set is from. The Craig scythe, Craig 13 scythe is different from the pail driver and the blood force. This one is black. That one is white. There you go. Now to put the, um, I guess, effects on, you do want to have them lined up properly. And that's kind of how you want to have that lined up. The prongs will just kind of fit into the groove right there. Right there. And then you can hold it in his hand if you want to have him hold it. Just like that. Like he's taunting someone. I'm here for you. You are mine now. You will come with me. Or I will eradicate you. You know, all that fun stuff that we all that we all do. Um, if you want to have it on the scythe. The scythe. Here's the effect for the scythe. You just kind of slide that in there. And all the effects for the scythe are exactly the same color. They're all this red color. It doesn't matter. They didn't color, color match. It's all just one scythe color. And you can kind of have that in his hand kind of going shh you know, swiping at somebody. So that's pretty cool that they, they included that. And then you also have this shooting effect, which is pretty cool. And you just want to slide that in there. Just try to be careful with this plastic. It's very thin and you don't want to snap it. So what I'll, what I like to do is I like to kind of just gently kind of, whoa. <laughs> I like to gently just ease it in there we go and it is a very thin plastic on that peg just try to be careful but that's what the uh the gun will shooting effect will look like and it is a translucent so you could uh kind of hike some you know some light behind it or whatever you want to do to kind of get it to look like it's actually blasting but it looks pretty cool and you can use that also on the handgun as well. I just really get worried about that thin plastic like that. Oof. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. If I can get this gun out. Good lord. That's really in there. Oh, and the magazine fell out. As you can see, we do have removable magazines for the pistol and they just kind of slide in there. Uh, we also have a chamber that is movable here. 
So it does ratchet back and forth like a real gun does. So that's pretty cool. And you can fit the blast effect also in there. Like I said, there you go. It looks pretty good, pretty dope like that. I like that. <laughs> pretty awesome. Pretty damn cool. Okay, and I'm just gonna use him as an example for the hands. Um, let me get this out of his hand really quick. Um, get that out of there too. Uh, we do have a trigger hand, which we only have one trigger hand, which is very odd. Um, and it's on the left side, even though they show on the promo packages him using his right hand for the trigger, but he's a lefty. I don't, it's a, I'm fine with him being a lefty. I, I don't have any problem with that. Um, I will say this though, uh, like I said, one trigger hand for the left hand, and then he has two of these gripping hands right here, gripping hand on this side and that side. All the hands are the same across the all the, the Krig figures. We also have some open gesturing hands as well. Right there. Another open gesturing hand. It's kind of like a flipping hand. And then we have two, count them, two fist hands, which are pretty cool too. So that's what those look like. Um, all the hands and such. Like I said, Krig 13 is essentially the same, just different paint apps. Um, let's see if he can actually get his knife into this hand because this is a very dainty looking knife for this gripping hand and it doesn't seem like he can really hold it and he can't. Now you can manipulate the hand to kind of get him in holding it a little bit tighter but I feel like that's just not going to stay and yeah, I feel like it's not going to stay. Let's see if we can get him into the trigger hand. Maybe that'll make a little bit more sense for that. He could definitely hold it with his trigger hand. But this knife looks so dainty. I mean, they should have went with a little bit of a bigger knife here. A bigger handle, too. They should have given him, like, some big-ass Rambo knife, you know? So this little butter knife. I don't know what's going on here. This does not look intimidating at all. I guess it's kind of more of, like, a last-ditch effort, last-resort knife, you know, than anything. But still, it would have been nicer if they got him a bigger knife. Give him that knife that maybe came with a uh, Hawk P40. You know, that would have made more sense. Those are all the hands. Here we now have the rest of his magazines, which two are up there. I put those two there in that loop. Over here, we've got the other two. Like I said, they are removable with the, the sidearm. Over here, we have some like wrists. We have some communicators. We have like a communicator here and here. Uh, I wish there was a place to store them on his body. It would have been, I think, cool to like be able to put a communicator on like maybe his forearm or something like that. But then we also have a grenade here, here, and here. And they have two others, which I already put on his back. So they're right there and there. And they hold okay if you bump into them too many times and they might pop off. But uh, for the most part, everything is pretty much cinched down decently. Let's just kind of see how poseable he is here. Let's kind of play around with him for a minute. Pose him up. Get him in kind of like a, I don't know, some sort of kneeling pose here. Maybe he's like reaching for his knife. His kniff. Oops, there goes another grenade. <laughs> Can't win with those damn grenades, can we? But he can hit a kneeling pose perfectly fine. No, no issues there. Like reach it for that. You need him to take a knee. You could do that. The other cool thing about the having the helmet on is that even though the head is very hindered, which is pretty much wanting to swivel and looking a little bit up, you can actually move the helmet on its own and articulate it. Even if the head doesn't want to do that, you can still articulate the helmet a little bit more gives a little bit more character too. So there's that. So taking a knee, let's see if we can get him into like some crazy Shawn Michaels pose. Let's see if we can do Shawn Michaels pose with him. Shawn Michaels pose. 
just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. Touch a boy toy, boy toy. So he can Shawn Michaels pose. So there you go. Shawn Michaels pose right there. Can he hold it? That's the other thing. Oh, he's kind of leaning forward now. He's a little top heavy. <laughs> just a little bit. But he can do Shawn Michaels pose. So there you go. Now let's do an actual fighting stance pose here. Somehow. In some way. And somehow. In some way. In a universe where there's some way or somehow to do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding that. I don't know why this taser is just one of my favorite things for him to hold. But it is. But yeah, he can he can hold a pose, man. He can look good doing it. holding this grenade that fell out of his hand. Then you can put that taser effect in there. His angle pivot, I guess, is it's there and it'll hold the pose and everything. You should be good to go there. Let's pop that back, bad boy back in there too. Maybe he doesn't need his rifle for this mission, you know? But they're still fun to pose and such, so you shouldn't have too many issues. Let's just kind of get him in a, like a leaping pose here. Get that grenade out of his hand. It's like a jumping, leaping pose at you. So you can get him on his display stand, kind of leaping upward. About to swing at you. Um, let's see if we can get him, you know, balance on one leg. Which he actually has pretty good extension for a heavier figure. That's pretty decent extension for a cloth figure. Let's see if I can get this helmet off. That'll help with the balance. A little bit better. <laughs> He's like, Wacha, you know? There we go. Kicking the shit out of you. Okay, as far as size comparisons go with both Craigs, I put both Craigs in here just to, to give you an idea of what uh, size comparisons are with the helmets on, with the helmets off. Um, so we've got an Articulated Icons Ninja on the left, and then we've got a Marvel Legends Morbius on the right. Okay, next up we've got two Jazzwares uh, Spartan Collection Halo figures. We've got the Mark V armor on the right, and then the uh, uh, Palmer on the left. Okay, next up we've got uh, WWE Elite Bret Hart on the left, and then on the right we've got a DC uh, Multiverse McFarlane Dawnbreaker. Okay, next up we've got some fellow Mezco figures. Um, on the left we've got Baron Benz, and on the right we've got the Red Death Doc Nocturnal. Okay, next up we've got two Mythic Legions. We've got Valthog on the left, and we've got Sir Gideon Heaven's Brand on the right. Okay, and next up we've got two NECA figures, and in the spirit of Halloween, I decided to go with Michael Myers on the left, and on the right we've got these Ghostface Scream Killer. And last up, I decided to go with a uh, Lightning Collection figure on the left, and then on the right, we've got a Motu Classics Vicor. So that's how they stack up in case you wanted to use maybe uh, one of these Mezco figures or one of the um, Cr uh, Kriggs as a uh, maybe a Power Rangers villain. So he's a little bit beefier. Kind of could fit in with the Power Rangers too. So if you wanted to go with that route, you could. Maybe he's like a an alien bounty hunter of some sort, and he's trying to track down... Uh, Somebody, I don't know, someone from the Power Rangers. But you can go with that. World is your oyster, but that's how they stack up. For my final thoughts on uh, the uh, Craig 13 figure and uh, the Pale Drivers, um, I got to say, they're, they're fun. these are fun figures to a certain extent. I feel like I actually have more fun posing Baron Ben's um, than I do Craig for some reason. I think it's just due to... 
the bulkiness of the armor. Um, he kind of has, I mean, you can get him to look down the sights on his, on his uh, guns, uh, but, or his, his gun, excuse me, his shoddy, but um, he kind of sits awkwardly. The fact that we weren't given a right-handed trigger finger is very odd to me. Um, I feel like they would, they should have included that. I mean, if you're going to give a lefty, give a righty also. Um, this way we can set them up any which way. But, I mean, I guess I, I don't really mind either way, but I would just prefer, you know, if you're, if you're paying $100 or $95 for one of these figures, that we would get a right and a left trigger finger. Now, you can split one of the fingers on the gripping finger right here, like one of those. You can if you want to. Uh, I don't know how many of you want to mod their Mezco figures. Those are, they're expensive, but you can if you want to. The light-up feature works well. I don't have an issue with it. Um, I like the way the helmet is set up. I like the design of the helmet. And overall, I like the aesthetics of, of um, all the Krigs. I think... Craig 13 though specifically I like the most and the, he's kind of black on black which is which is fine but he does stand out from the others like I said his uh poncho or his his uh cape here or whatever you want to call it um it is specific for him um so you can't really swap it with anybody else it's meant for Craig 13 um I like that he's his own character and kind of there's a little bit of more lore there for us to learn from. Um, I like the pale drivers also. I want to say that they're probably, they're right up there with Craig. I think they're definitely better than the, um, the, the all red one, which is just different shades of red within red, which kind of blends into it looking more red than, than normal, especially on camera. Um, the pale drivers definitely have the best paint apps, period. Um, as far as the white really being brought out by the black paint shading, it's top notch. Um, the black in the boots and all in the crevices between the armor pieces is top notch. I don't really have any issues with paint applications or anything like that. I don't really have any issues with any quality control. Um, I just kind of wish the body moved a little bit more fluid. Um, other than that, I'm pretty pleased with both of these, um, you know, I try. I do like to play with the Mezco figures and, and play around with them and pose them and take photos. But, you know, I don't know how heavy-handed I'm going to be with them. They're obviously not going to be used in the same way that I would use a Marvel Legend. Just because these figures are more expensive, it makes you not want to, I don't know, play around with them as much. Because you feel like if they break, then it's like, wow, you just kind of broke the bank for an expensive figure and then broke it. Um, I kind of feel the same way about Doc Nocturnal. He feels very dainty because he's on a smaller body. But um, I don't know. I still have fun with these Mezco figures regardless whether it's playing with them or just aesthetically. Um, I like that we're, we're getting original characters and even with some reused parts from previous figures. But um, overall... I'm pretty pleased with them. They're fun to still play around with. I, I find myself not being able to put down either one of these figures. And um, it's nice to, you know, add them to the collection. It's like a we're, we're adding more and more members to like a <laughs> Mezco's own little, I don't know, Avengers team or whatever you want to call it. But I think it's pretty cool. I like to actually think in my head that because um, they actually show in the, what was it, the Mezco commercial with Craig 13 they actually show him his uh if you go watch the little commercial that they have for it he's his next target is Baron Ben so I like to think that he tries to hunt and track down Baron Ben's but it's not for that type of reason it's to kind of recruit him for the next team or what I also like to think is that maybe they fight each other Baron Ben's you know maybe defeats him and then you know, maybe they become buddies after, you know, something like, something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool to do that. Um, but yeah, I could see a team forming, you know, this kind of team of misfits forming. Um, I'm not really sure how Doc Nocturnal fits in with the, the rest of the group, but I'm sure there's a way. I mean, 
uniqueness always have, has a way of fitting in with a, a team and such. But anyway, I've babbled on enough. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's something that I forgot to say in the review. So if I did, don't hesitate to let me in the let me know in the comments below. I don't mind constructive criticism as long as it's constructive and not just rude. Um, but other than that, um, you know these these guys are fantastic. Uh, I like them for the most part, and I definitely give them a two thumbs up. Siskel and Ebert, two thumbs up, and say uh, try to grab just one. But um, other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.